Hi, I'm Allison Schneider and you're watching Street Level Network. Basically started interning like a fiend all through college. Um, worked at Electra, worked for various television production companies, and right out of college got hired at Warner Special Products, which is a subsidiary of Warner Records, doing um, just supervision, creative, licensing, um, all the, and a, a ton of grunt work for the Time Warner record labels. And then got a job at NBC about three years later and just worked my way up. Huge passion, like psychotic passion my entire life. Um, stalker level passion, um, major dranny, major goth. Um, so just love it, love it as much today as I did when I was, you know, 12, 13. A music supervisor is someone who manages the music in a production or a promotional campaign, advertising campaign, games. So what they're in charge of is um, basically being the liaison for the producers of whatever the project is. So they can do anything from being the creative. In some cases you don't, but usually you know, you're know you finding the songs, you're dealing with the licensing, all the negotiations with the copyright holders, the record labels, um, you manage the budget, you just make sure all the, the uh, legalese is taken care of as well as everybody's creative needs. Hi, I'm Allison Schneider and you're watching Street Level Network. So we do use, um, you know, people like Pump Audio, uh, Five Alarm, Rescue Records, people like that, as well as, you know, all the record labels, a lot of music production libraries. We've got a lot of resources. It's a catch-22. You know, obviously some of the greatest relationships I have in the business came from meeting people. And actually the greatest relationships I do have in the business are from really getting an opportunity to sit down with someone and cultivate um, a, a connection with them. It can be bad in that um, sometimes there are a lot of people at the same time in the same place and you just can't get an imprint of anybody that's coming your way. You don't remember where a CD came from. So. I would email. I would get an email address and send a quick note explaining who you are, um, asking if they can send maybe an MP3. Do you take unsolicited? Is there a way for them to become solicited? Just a, a very short explanation of who they are, what style they do. Um, also, it's really important for them to do their research, so they should know a little bit about the music supervisor before they go to them, because yeah. we certainly don't want somebody suggesting things for projects that it, you know, it would be inappropriate musically. Yeah. But most of us are pretty responsive. It takes us a little bit of time, but we do prefer email because then we can deal with it when we get a chance. It is, you know, as far as, as new people that um, don't have any kind of reputation, yeah, it helps. Management's fine, but it's best, if they only run publishing, it's nice for us because um, we would consider that an in indie placement and the quickest and easiest way that we can place someone, the better, the more apt chance that they have of getting placed. The, once they're assigned to a publishing company, it tends to complicate things or at least yeah. increases the amount of time it takes for us to actually get everything cleared in time. So, Most Heroes, um, I've got a show called Lipstick Jungle. I did Profiler, I did Crossing Jordan. Um, I did all the licensing for Providence and a little bit of creative, but I had a friend actually who was a music supervisor on that. Did a show called Cold Feet, which was the American version of the British right. series. Um, a show called LAX. Gosh. Um, done a whole lot of movies of the week that were featuring tortured women who had bad relationships that I did years and years ago. Did a show called The Pretender. Uh, and a show called Surface. That was probably about three years ago. Most of them get canceled after a season, with the exception of <laughs> Heroes and Crossing Jordan, and hopefully Lipstick Jungle will keep coming back. So. Heroes is really unusual. Um, every show is completely different. Heroes, there is a, an executive producer named Alan Arkish who is a major music fanatic. And, I mean, he directed Rock and Roll High School. He's a big fan. He's listening constantly. So Alan is really, truly the day-to-day. -day. He directs a lot of the episodes. Um, so in, in the case of Heroes, I'm mostly a music manager. We don't use a lot of music. Um, when they call on me to do something for it, it's 
usually it's when Alan's really busy, so it's like, hey, Allison, can you find a song quickly for this party scene or whatever? Um, so that's a little different. Lipstick Jungle, on the other hand, I'm sitting in the edit bays constantly and creating lots of compilation CDs and constantly in communication with the executive producer to try to determine, you know, whether or not maybe he, a song's been oversaturated or that is that is absolutely probably I would say 97 percent of what is heard in Lipstick Jungle comes from myself and my co-music supervisor, Heroes. You know, it's every so often, <laughs> but that's a lot of budget management and stuff. So every show's different. Heroes was never supposed to be a music intensive show. It was always supposed to be a real score show. And the only reason why it's changing at the season is because we have a soundtrack album. So we've got a lot of songs that we need to try to support in, in the upcoming. I think they have to be willing to work for free for a long time. Um, I think definitely if you're in college, get it, try to get an internship. Um, try to definitely get into working with a music supervisor. Um, or, you know, I know most of the music supervisors are in Los Angeles, unfortunately, so if you're not based in LA, it's kind of difficult. Or try to intern with a record label or a publisher. You can't really, you can't be a music supervisor unless you know how to license. So really, the place to start is a label or publishing house and try to learn about music licensing. Try to, there's so much to learn. Who owns copyrights? Um, what the territories are that need to be licensed? what the standard fee ratios are, and you can't actually music supervise a program and suggest a song unless you have all that in your head ahead of time. There's just no time to learn it. Researching, finding out who is working on the shows and sending an email out and just trying to introduce yourself that way. Because if you send it, I mean, we, we all average probably about 100 packages a week, so yeah. If we don't know the people, we're pretty reluctant, and also we have to be careful, especially those of us that work for companies, um, just because they've been burned in the past. So we have to be really careful about where we're getting it from, and we have to make sure that we, we know something about them, because we still have to find out, do, can they actually represent what they're sending, mm -hmm. all that stuff. It depends on the series. If it's a, a, a series like Heroes, which is a hit, we do a buyout because it's all over. Yeah. It's broadcast all over the world, and, and because we don't use too much music in it, we're actually able to retain the original um, show as is. Uh, certain series that we don't know whether or not they're going to have a future, we do a limited term, so we don't do a buyout because we don't know if the show's going to stay on yeah. the air very long. Um, but usually, you know, you get your master fee, which is the recording, so the artist version of it. So depending on whatever deal they have with their label, if they're not recouped, they may never see it. Um, you have the publishing fee, so whoever owns the copyright. Um, if This is why it's good if you're a songwriter to not sign a publishing deal with someone because at least then, if you're a recording artist also, you have a fighting chance of getting the full fee. You'll get 100%. Yeah. If you're an artist, you may not see that for years. And then you also get your performance royalties from your, your uh, society that yeah. you affiliate with. Providing the cue sheets of building, right? Exactly. So every time the show airs, every time the promo airs, you get a fee for that from your, your PRS. So. I think it's better to go to them to get educated from the panel situation. So I would go to the panels and try to learn as much as you can and really pay attention to the advice you're getting, but not expect that you're going to walk away from a label deal or a publishing deal, or necessarily any amazing contact because they're pretty overwhelming for us. But I would go to attend the panels, and basically the most the, the the easiest way to get to any of us is going to be to try to reach out and email and make a connection that way. Because usually when we're in a, a situation like Meetam or South by or something like that, there's so many people that even though we'll remember you that week, two three weeks when we get home and we're unloading the CDs out of our backpack and business cards have fallen out and we can't keep track of what is what, you just don't remember. To try to become a manager or to try to become a music supervisor, um, you're still, if nobody knows who you are, it's really hard. So you just have to try to figure out a connection. Also, I, you know, you need to do your research. See if you know anybody that can help make that introduction mm -hmm. because that's huge too. And the minute somebody calls and says, hey, Allison, I vouch for this person, that's like, oh, okay, great. You know, I trust their instincts because we have so many people that are trying to get to us all the time. Um, you know, another thing that I would recommend is if you are affiliated with a society, which you should be, obviously, I mean, you shouldn't send anything out to anybody that's not copywritten. Um, all of them have writer 
divisions and and all of them have film and TV divisions now too. people that actually know all of us and I don't think very many people think about this but I would go to your representative at ASCAP, BMI, SOCAN, whatever and say hey you know can you help me can you make a connection for me and I get CDs all the time you know per, per this person at ASCAP and so I pay attention to that because they don't send people over very often.